Uh, we are about to do a live stream investigation and this one we're very very excited about as you can hear it's quite noisy behind me at the moment that's because we are on North Terrace so and I'm just going to turn it around because there are some beautiful buildings here I know there's a big hotel being made there but I just love the old little houses that are here but this is where we are investigating tonight how Absolutely amazing is this place. So this is the Grand Lodge of the Freemasons of South Australia and Northern Territory. And if you're wondering who the disembodied voice is, this is Rodney next to me. <laughs> Rodney's going to give us a little bit of a history of this building. And he's also going to tell us why we're here, looking for the paranormal. You know, I didn't see these last time, so what are the names? These, this is a cenotaph to those Freemasons from South Australia, Northern Territory, that went to the First World War. Oh, okay. And when you think of the population of South Australia, Northern Territory, back in 1914, Yeah. And you look at all these names. I was going to say, that's a lot of names, isn't it? That's a lot of names. And I gather some of them wouldn't have come back. Those sadly. that didn't come back are yeah. marked by a little cross. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, well. Wow. He commenced building in 1924 and it was completed in 1927. Uh, the main material used to construct the building is what's known as cinder block. Okay. Wow. Well. Um, the marble in here is, is uh, Italian marble. The front steps are red granite from Angerston. Wow. So where uh, did the, oh, the marble came from Italy then? So they yes, had it shipped all this way? All this way. Wow. The sand used to render the building inside and out, because this, these pillars is actually concrete render. Right. But the sand used to mix that render was actually imported from the United States. Oh, okay. So why did they bring it all the way from there? Uh, for the texture and colour, because they wanted it to look like sandstone. Wow. People have this idea of what the Masons are. So why exactly are the Masons? Basically, I, we're the largest charitable fundraising organisation in the world. Yeah, I, I, I didn't realise just how much charity work that they do. It, oh yes. It's, uh, it's amazing. And that's why I said to people, I think you're going to be surprised. On um, We're going to talk a little bit more about it later. So. It's, people think we're a religion, but we're not a religion. Where people get mixed up is the fact that to be a Freemason, you must believe in a supreme being. Uh, however, there's six or seven um, organised religions that are acknowledged. For instance, Christendom, Judaism, Islam, uh, Buddhism, Hinduism. And so long as there is a, a, a globally recognised volume of the sacred law for your belief system, we'll accept that religion as um, suitable for you to be okay. a Freemason. So it has to be a proper religion, it can't just be, hey, I believe in some greater being, yeah. but it, there's no yeah. religion on it. Yeah. To, yeah. To, to say you're a, you're a Jedi or a, um, a spaghetti monster, yeah, no, it's not going not gonna to happen. <laughs> We're here obviously for one reason, and that's because there's been rumours for a long time coming out about this place having a few strange things happening. This place has a lot of strange things happening in it. Um, deadlocked doors suddenly appear to be open without the deadlocks having been disengaged. Lights get turned on, lights get turned off. Doors get locked when no one's around. Um, one particular ghost has been witnessed by quite a few people. Some were Freemasons, some were people that were just hiring the building to um, hold a function. And while they were doing their setup, they were followed round by this old gentleman who um, was very interested in what they were doing. All right, did they actually see him? Or? Yes, they saw him and they actually identified him um, 
by being shown a portrait that is currently hanging in the uh, basement. And when they were showing that portrait, it was, oh, yes, that's him. <laughs> that's him. <laughs> and he was seen on one occasion going into a stairwell that hasn't existed for nearly 50 years. Oh, wow. So. There is a specific thing about him, though, that wasn't it, that they recognised him, that's why they knew it was him? Yes. Uh, the first oh, person yes, that identified him for us actually came in to do a tour of yeah. the building. And at that stage, his portrait was hanging on the third floor. And when we finally got up there, the, uh, this gentleman said, oh, that's the bugger that's been driving me nuts since I set foot in here. Look, he's got six fingers on one hand. Wow. And I'd worked here for about 10 years at that stage, and I'd never noticed that in the portrait, he has six fingers on one hand. Wow. That's unusual, isn't it? Well, it's not it something is, you can what's, miss. What's even more unusual is the fact that he died roughly 40 years before we purchased this land and started building this building. Okay. And he came to the building attached to his portrait. Wow. So this is the Grand the Hall, Great Hall, Great Hall, which is used for weddings, balls, conferences, lectures, um, basically anything you wish to hire it for. Wow. A couple of years ago, the State Opera actually performed uh, the Magic Flute in here. Oh, the acoustics would be quite good. The in acoustics here, it? were superb for the opera. Now, I'm going to look back at the balcony here. Yes. So with the balcony, you told me a story to do with... Yes. Um, working in here one evening, we had three or four long rows of trestle tables in here, and I was cleaning them in preparation for a function. And out of the corner of my eye, up on the balcony, on the northeast side of the balcony, um, there was four people standing. Right. Couldn't identify them because I'd look and they'd be gone. But they were there for probably about an hour and a half, just watching what I was doing. Would you say they're all male or female as well, or mixed? On that occasion, they were all male. Okay. We do have one female who haunts the building. Uh, we have no idea where she came from, how she got here, why she's here, her connection or anything. Because it would be unusual, wouldn't it, for a female to... Because it's pretty much male, is it, the Masons? Yes. Freemasonry is still male only. Yeah. And actually, up until about 20 years ago, women didn't even get up to the third and fourth floor where the lodge rooms are. Oh, wow because even the cleaners were male for wow. that area. Wow, because we've just been up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things have progressed. Oh. Um, the gentleman, the lift or something, and the, the camera showed there was nobody there? Yes, the um, security camera that we had pointed at the lift. When someone went in a path, it put a square around their head to highlight their head. Well, on the western door going into the western lift, quite often you'd see that head square turn up and move across from the door into the lift. Sometimes the lift doors would open and close, sometimes they didn't. But the, um, yeah, the head square would move into the lift or come out of the lift and go out the door and there was no one there. Okay. Yeah. So the lifts have been known to go up and down, haven't they? Oh yes, the lifts, the lifts will quite often come on command and that's without pushing the button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I've heard that from other people who've been here and worked here that they get a little freaked out because the lifts will just start up on their own yes. and kind of take off <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> so, they, as if somebody's they, getting in and out. So. They have a life of their own. They have a life of their own. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to get started. Keg's, Keg's looking very impatient over there. <laughs> and I'm going to introduce you to our two special guests tonight, because we've kind of ignored them. We have an award winner, 
Amy's crypt. <laughs> so we've got Amy and Jared with us tonight. So Hello, I'm sure everybody's going to say congratulations for your win this morning. So, oh. well, I suppose it's last night over there, wasn't it? But uh, win for us because Amy actually won the Higgy Pop blogger, best blogger in the, in the world, like I guess, because it's in a worldwide world. thing. So there you go. How cool is that? So we are now in bathed in the presence. Thanks, Alison. You flatter me way too and now much. She's, and now she's so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my... All right, so we're just going to get everybody set up with the kits, guys. So Alison's sorting out. What are you going to start off with, Alison? EVP. EVP. I always like to do that straight away. And the reason I like to do it straight away is because, um, I don't know, it seems to be, if I get my best EVPs, have always been at the beginning, when it's always fresh. I'm just going to start calling out a little bit. All right, well, if there is somebody here tonight, I'm going to introduce myself. My name's Alison, and we've got CAG here, then Amy, and we've got Jared sitting in his throne over there. <laughs> and you would know what me and Carol. I'm sorry, I don't know. The gentleman Michael. behind you. Um, behind us is Matthew. Matthew, Matthew sorry. Yes, yes. So, and we hope you don't mind us coming into this absolutely stunning building. I don't know if you're up on the balcony watching us. I know you've watched people before, just to see what we're up to. It must be very strange, us being here. And what we put out must be very strange as well to you. All right, let's do an EVP. Okay. So just for Carol and Rodney, because we do like to explain to our hosts, because they haven't done this before. Um, electronic voice phenomena, uh, voices on tape that you don't hear at the time, or recordings you don't hear at the time. Um, when you play it back, you suddenly find you've got another voice on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to do what we call an EVP first, which is we're all going to think of a question. We're all going to ask a question, we're going to leave a gap. And then what we're going to do is we're going to listen back to it, guys. I'm going to put the speaker in, we can all listen back, including you guys. So, um, all right, so I'm going to put that there. I don't touch it. All right, on the table here, we've got a little box with an orange light. Can you come close to that box and try and speak? into it. We might not hear you at the time, but when we play it back, we might be able to hear you then. So I've given you our names. I'm just wondering if you can give us your name, please. Who is it who's being seen and heard in here? Can you tell us what this room was used for? All right, I'll listen back. So what I'm going to do, guys, is we're just going to listen back, see if we've got anything. All right, that's not unusual. Plus they won't be used to the equipment in here, would they? Well, that's the other thing is we tend to come to places and sometimes we find for the first time you're not getting much because it's almost like, this. I know I would. I'd be standing there going, what is... <laughs> it's like, you'd be kind of confused. So even in some of our venues where we're doing tours, it took two or three goes before it started to interact. So it's not unusual that sometimes it takes a little bit. But. And again, if we were investigating, for all you who investigate out there, okay, if we were here for the night, we would just be sitting monitoring. We would quietly sit maybe around the building and just listen most of the time with little bursts of trying to get it to interact. But because we're only here for a short time and because obviously we want to try and get some stuff to you, hopefully. 
then what we'll do is we'll be a bit more proactive. So we're going to keep going from one to another to try and get and see if we can get a interaction or not. So what we want to do is maybe we'll do the portal. Uh, overwhelming SDs actually. Overwhelming SDs. How yes. We do both. All right, we'll do SDs first. Jared, should we put Jared on the? Estes? Yeah, should we do Jared? Jared's funny on Jared's the SDs. Everybody good? Yeah. All right, can you hear me, Jared? Can you hear me, Jared? You've got another award. He's gone. <laughs> He's gone. All right. How many of you are there here? Can you tell me how many, please? Martin B. Is that your name? Brian. Oh, Brian's name. Seventies. Mr. Vivian, are you here? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, hello. Who's Mr. Vivian? It's from Rosemary. It's probably one of Rosemary's relatives because Rosemary's got relatives everywhere. That was a very immediate yes. It was, wasn't it? Can you tell me how many, please, are here with us? How many in this building? People reporting seeing figures on the balcony. Yeah. Do it like that. So two. Two? Okay. So there's two of you here. George Potter here. George Potter, are you with us tonight? Through all their family members, are we? Okay, we're going through <laughs> all the family members. Who's here? Who's here? In this institute. Um, do you mean us? Oh, we got corner. What? We're you're listening. You're listening. All right. Well, we're listening as well. We're hoping we'll get an answer. Hey. Actually, this is going to sound really tough. Questions. Yeah, we're asking questions. This is going to sound really tacky, and I don't usually say this. Mm -hmm. But when I was looking at him there, mm -hmm. I thought I saw something up there as well. Well, lots of people reporting seeing figures it, up it there. Was, uh, the, it was like Rodney said, it was out of the corner. Rodney Ryan. It was just against the wall, but then it's, as soon as I looked, it wasn't there. So it could be a trick of the eye. I'm going to put it down as well. But... How many fingers do you have? Can you tell me many, that? Many, many. You do have many, it's, many. That's a weird one. <laughs> that was a little bit strange. It was a bit strange, wasn't it? But how many? Bruce. Do the people watching know the bingo story? Uh, did we tell that downstairs? Did we? I think we only spoke amongst ourselves. One of them. Ah, yeah, no, yeah. Did we talk about it in the foyer? I spoke about it in the foyer. All right, for mm. those who have only just joined us, so. Uh, one of the gentlemen who passed away, uh, he didn't die here, he passed right. away before this building was built. Um, he actually had six fingers. On one hand? Yeah. You okay with women being in here at the moment? Please don't leave. Okay, that's nice. Wait. Very grateful for his to be being allowed to be in here. They're very privileged. Job. Would you like to talk to Carol or Rodney? You would recognise Carol and Rodney. Perfect. Would you be happy to talk to them? No. Oh, okay. okay, so you were told. <laughs> you want to try putting the portal on? Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
The money. It's too well into it. <laughs> At least you know you can't hear. I get it. And I agree. It's a couple of some interesting ones. Two, oh, two or three interesting. Two or three quite immediate um, answers, wasn't it? Ones with it? So basically, it's the same thing as what Jared's been doing with the headphones, except now what I'm doing is I'm running it through this. So what this does is it cuts out a lot of that static and mm -hmm. kind of clears, well, clears up the words a little bit. So. So the clicking is the ghost box, the guys. The clicking is the ghost box, going through its thing. This radio, so it's the same thing. I'm trying to hear the words. It's very muffled tonight. And you are in the middle of a building. Cancer, okay. Nice. It's about the only clear word that's come out of it. Yeah. Cancer. Did you die of cancer? We've actually got a camera um, set up for an abandonment in a different uh, room altogether, somewhere where none of us are anywhere near. Yeah, um, three store, uh, floor three, yeah, third floor. Uh, we've got a camera and some equipment out there. We're just leaving it. We're not going to get into, up to the third floor tonight because this building's huge. But that'll just run now. just recently opened. It's a cafe and a second-hand book shop as well. Right. Um, it's been beautifully set up uh, by Taylor and Holmes. Um, it's um, open to the public five days a week, 7am to 3pm. There was some confusion. People thought that it was just for Freemasons membership, but it, it's for the general public. Yeah. And uh, we really encourage people to come. And that, that's what I wanted to get through is before I came here, when we came first time, I always thought you could not get into this building unless you were Freemason. Yeah, a lot of people have thought that, but it's certainly not the case. We welcome visitors. And uh, hopefully when COVID relaxes, we'll be doing some more tours through the whole place. And um, we, you know, the more the merrier. Yeah. So this is the gentleman that if you look on his left hand, I don't know if I can zoom in a bit. Not his right hand, no, but his left. it's his right. Is it his right? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, he's sorry, right. the, uh, our left. Our yeah. left is what I'm yeah. trying to zoom in on. So you'll see he's got very strange, with the six fingers. And that was one of the things that came out, wasn't it? How mm. many fingers have you got? Many, many. Yeah. So. Well, come and have a coffee. Um, and something to eat. It is stunning. You can sit in that stunning room that we've just been in and you can look at the books while you're having it. And uh, we'll come into the library if you've got any research to do, anything to look at. They've got the library here that's open. So we'll even take out a membership. Always welcome. So I'm going to come and join, well, I'm going to come to one of the evening events they're going to have here. But the trouble is I work Fridays. Yeah, you're not going to come on Fridays because you're working for me. Well, no. Not unless I get sick you. A you can Actually, come that's a good idea. But I could come <laughs> and join them. <laughs> we weren't filming, but.
but we heard, I'm just going to turn it to Amy, we heard a massive big boom, didn't we? Like a big loud thud coming from, obviously like we're not filming, we're not live, nothing. No, <laughs> it's like when it was just like... to play up. <laughs> you said the ghosts are cheeky though, right? Yep. So it shows how cheeky they are. <laughs> it was just this boom. Yeah, it so, must have been a door or something, I guess, maybe, mm. and out here when we we're all in here, so. Yeah, there's nobody out there, and uh, Rodney's gone and checked, and there is nobody. Yes, went yeah. up, and no, the doors upstairs are locked, so. And there's nobody around. No one's around. So, cool. And we had a couple of other weird little things. Yeah, the periscope went off. Yeah. Well, that never goes off. I know, that very rarely very goes off. off. And then I put a cut ball on the table over there, and it was fine, balanced it, no problem. I turned around and walked off, and it fell on, it just went onto the floor. But it was balanced, it was fine. It hadn't, the table doesn't slant or anything. So and, that was just And the thing is, is that this is now a slab concrete floor, so you walking would not no. make the table rattle. No, no. <laughs> it's not the scientists. Was the obelisk said anything? And there's just some words on it. Uh, it is cake day. Okay. Cake day. Oh, you see, that is my sort of thing. Well, it knows it's in the cafe. It is. Cake day, okay. Cake day, okay. Oh, well, there you go. It knows. It knows. So, cool. It's obviously an intelligent party. <laughs> All right. Well, I was told earlier that this room was used for, was it a Hotel Mumbai? In the Hotel Mumbai. Oh yes. yes, so this was actually used in the filming of a movie and if you look around, it looks like a movie set, it's so cool. <laughs> it does. <laughs> no. But what the, you said that when they were doing the movie, Sorry. <laughs> they had, actually had uh, strange... That they, when they went to do the editing of the... Um, soundtrack of the movie there was a lot of stuff on there that they don't know where it came from okay. so it's all very old it all had to be edited that and, and that was down in this area that was down in this area that's you pretty said cool it was like additional voices right additional voices and yeah um they definitely couldn't explain what they heard so they could have caught EVPs while making yeah. their movie. <laughs> more more cool than that. That's so cool. That is cool, isn't I it? it. <laughs> more than likely. Amy, want to take a turn on that? Oh, well, I think Amy should do it. Yeah. You want to be happy to do it? Yeah. What do you do? I quite like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a nice room. Crazy. Yeah, we've had little things. Yeah, up to you. Yeah, I'm done. If you're up to... Oh, she might want to sit in that seat there, look. This one here, look. Yeah. Okay. The master. It's more of an award winner's sort of chair, isn't it? Me, I'm just going to put it down. So yeah, exactly. Right, we yeah, we were going to pull her on the stairs, no. but no, no, no. So I was just going to stick her on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is an award-winning chair, so this is the one that Emma's going to sit in. Hey, Jared. Because yeah. <laughs> Jared's sat on one here as well. Look, you can look. Look at this. Look. <laughs> My hand was getting sore. Really yeah, but look, he's actually sat in one of the chairs as well. Oh, yeah. yes. Don't go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're going up in this. They are. It's all cool now. Bless them. Love them to bits. <laughs> Amy, can you hear us testing? Amy, do you want to go to the winery? Do you want to go for the cheese platter? She's all good. Cheddar? <laughs> Was that cheddar? Or chatter? Cheddar, she said. And you just said cheese platter. Peasant. Oh. Are you peasants? You're in Cut the out. 
I thought she said cheddar, which was interesting. We were talking about the uh, cheese platter. Isn't cheese platter, cheese platter, platter, isn't it? Cheddar. cheddar. What's your name? I'm Rob. Who are you? Okay. Do it. What's your name? Day. What day is it? I love you. You love us being here? Oh, I feel like it said pause. <laughs> Been called worse. Well, I don't think it was you. It might be not. Oh. I think it said tits. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, somebody's enjoying the female company a little much. <laughs> Is there a George here? Yes. Okay. Are you George? Paul. <laughs> Very interesting. Do you want me to make you a drink? What type of drink? What did he used to drink? Now Shane said that wouldn't be George because George wouldn't use that language because he was a good reverend. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> that would be Potter. Yes, yes. I remember him well. Oh, do you? Hmm. Oh, okay, because I've got his uh, son here. Shane. There's nothing really now coming out, but... No. It's all just wrong. Don't know. Oh, good. She was probably about to say the best word oh. ever. She probably was. <laughs> I don't know. Well I don't know. Whore and tits wasn't bad. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, this is not appropriate to say, but I'm going to say what I mean. <laughs> Thank you. Now I have a saying for the years. So I'm going to do it. Whore and tits. Well, that's that's unusual because that wouldn't come out for a Yeah. All right. Can you try? It did sound like Cag. Cag, I'm going to kiss them. <laughs> I don't think they need a kiss from me. Yeah. Who would you like 
like to speak to? The Dominion. People are still hearing it. Why do you keep saying K? Did you know me? And Amy's was quite interesting with the yeah. STC experiment. I don't think it's one I'm going to forget for a while. No, we're going to keep bringing that one up for a bit. Oh, that's all good. It's always going to be a highlight and it will have to be. You bring somebody along. I know, and they just have to and take it out. Yeah. You do, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. And then they just keep coming yeah. out. Then they have to sit in a throne. Yeah. 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 Yeah.